everybody welcome back to the channel in today's video we're going to be getting into the topic of when is your first state inspection as you get started with your assisted living facility so if you're interested in learning more about that and want to learn more about the process make sure you stay tuned Everybody, I'm Brandon Gustafson. I own and operate two assisted living facilities and I created assistedlivinginvesting.net to provide you with coaching that helps you start your own assisted living facility. Welcome to Assisted Living Investing. And our topic for today, we're going to be getting into when could you expect to have your first state inspection for your residential assisted living facility? This is a topic that I see often with people. As they're getting started on their journey, I see this a lot in Facebook forums and, and places like that. They want to know when when is the state going to come and when are they going to talk to me and when are they going to uh, come in and, and, and really kind of dig in to what I'm doing here at my facility and what's that going to look like and, and just that, that entire process. In a previous video, I talked about a state inspection that we had and a surprise state inspection. I also shared some tips and tricks with you about how to create a policy and procedure on the fly using ChatGPT. So I'll link those uh, videos up above here, both the one where I talk about our, our recent surprise uh, state inspection and also our one about how to create a quick policy on the fly. So you can use those as you're going through this process in the event that you do have a, a survey that comes in for for your for your facility. Now I want to talk to you first about what happens before you start operating your facility. There's actually a few inspections that can come up and not necessarily state inspections by the state uh, to, to kind of give you your 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 license or, or make sure that you're operating correctly. These inspections are coming from a few different areas and they're part of your licensing process and things that you're going to have to be aware of. I would say not every state is going to require these, but some of them might, and you want to be aware of these types of inspections that, that might come up. First is going to be the fire department. You may have to have the fire marshal come out, and this is the case if you're starting a brand new facility or you're converting a facility. Fire marshal is going to have to come out, and they're going to do some measurements and, and things like that if you're starting something brand new. They're going to want to make sure that you're ADA compliant, that your hallways and your doorways are wide enough, that your bathrooms are compliant with ADA standards, and that you have a fire suppression system in your facility. If you are purchasing an existing facility, they will come in and they're not going to be nearly as strict with the, the hallways and the doorways and some of those renovations that you would have to do if you're doing a, a brand new build because you're going to be grandfathered in if you are purchasing an existing facility. And so you don't need to have those things. But they will still come in and they're going to look at things like maximum occupancy and uh, make sure that your fire suppression system is in place and that it's working. As an example of this, when we purchased our facility in Idaho, we're going through the process and we had to have the fire marshal come in and they went through and they found that you know we were licensed for 16 residents that if we wanted to be licensed for 16 residents, then we were going to have to have another external facing bathroom, uh, meaning a public restroom. So we had to do a renovation, we had to coordinate with the sellers and, and have them do a renovation where they took one of the restrooms that was inward facing in a, into a bedroom and flip it, close off the door so it was no longer in there for the residents and was external facing so all the residents could, could use it. Already had a shower, already had a toilet, already had a sink. We just kind of had to flip where the door was for that so that it could be external facing and used by the rest of the, the home as they were going through. So that's the type of thing that you're going to need, but that's an inspection that was required for us to obtain our license. The next one I'm going to talk to you about is city zoning and planning. So it's possible, especially if you're buying, if you're if you're starting a brand new facility or doing kind of a renovation, that you're going to have somebody from the city come out and look at the facility and and make sure that it is in compliance with the types of things that, that they need it to be uh, compliant with for the proper zoning of the location where you are residing. So you might have to have them come out and look at it and. Uh, especially if you're going to have to change the zoning, if you're going to go through that process, you're probably going to have to have somebody from the city 
come out and look at that. That's just another inspection that you're going to need as you get into this process again, so that you can obtain your license as a part of your application process that you're going through with the with the state, the state health department, so you can get things moving along. And the third one is possibly the health department. It is possible that they will come out. Now, now they're not looking for specific things that you're doing wrong because you're not operating yet. They, if you're purchasing an existing facility, they may come in and suggest some changes, but they're not going to shut you down because of that. And if you're doing a brand new facility, they may come in and look at it and you know, say, oh, you've got to make sure that this thing is here. You want to have a spot for your med cart. You, uh, you want to make sure that uh, your rooms have door doors on them or a certain type of doorknob or, or something like that, or the stairs are uh, kind of in, in compliance if there are stairs. Those types of things are, are what they might be looking for if they come in pre-license for you to, to get things along. I personally have never had the state come out and do an inspection. I don't think it happens very often because they are so swamped with everything else that they have. But it's possible that they're going to come out and they're going to look at, at the facility before you get up and running and, and before you get your license. So you just want to be aware. So those are the three that could happen before you start your facility. Now we're going to talk about the ideal world uh, for what would happen uh, with the state. And this is <laughs> the state's ideal world. Uh, what they are hoping to do is get out and see the facility within the first 12 months of you operating. And this initial inspection is not necessarily to shut you down. It's to provide you with some feedback and guidance and make sure that you are operating correctly. They want to make sure that you're doing the things that you are supposed to be doing so you can successfully run your facility, that you're caring for your residents, that you are keeping all the documentation in place for your staff, all of those things they are going to give you that guidance. And so this, this initial inspection is not, um, unless you're doing something drastically bad, they're going to be a little bit more kind of slap on the wrist type things. You need to make these corrections here and you need to make them so that you're in compliance. Uh, but you know, you're not going to be in big trouble for it. Let's just get this, get this going and let's make sure that you're operating the way that you need to be. It's kind of the tone of that initial inspection. Uh, like I mentioned, the state wants to come in and do this. In reality though, what happens, at least in my experience, is they aren't able to do that. Um, at least since COVID, and I'm going to imagine a little bit before COVID, but because of COVID, that era, there still are staffing problems at the state. And they're not able to bring in as many people as they would like to. And so being short-staffed, getting out to do the inspections that they would like to do, uh, especially those initial inspections, it kind of doesn't fall within that first 12 month period. They, in my experience, are coming out between about, I would say in the first 18 to 20 months is when they're gonna come out. So between 12 and 18 or 12 and 20 months is probably the time frame realistically that you're going to be uh, going to be seeing this. Now this is the recording of this is in 2023. So if you watch this in three years from now, that might not be the case. Uh, it could be that they are accelerating that and they are out in the first six to nine months. But in my experience today in 2023, they're still delayed and they're still working on getting out there. And what that means, I mean, typically they're still going to be doing that initial inspection, but they may rope in a little bit more uh, given, you know, if you've been operating for more than a year, you should have a pretty good handle on what you're doing. You can always reach out to the state for guidance and things like that. And you want to make sure that you are in compliance with all of their regulations. You want to make sure that you're following all of the rules and that you're providing a good spot for your residents. So if your initial inspection ends up being beyond that point and you're getting into the 18 to 24 month time frame, you might have a few more things that come up by way of uh, little dings or corrections that you need to make at your facility because they're kind of combining that initial inspection with a subsequent inspection. They'll still be a little bit lenient with you, but it's something you just want to be aware of. Uh, do your best though to really get in there and make sure everything is in compliance. Make sure that you're doing all that you can to follow all the rules, have your policies and procedures documented, make sure that you're following them and 
that they are referencing the correct state regulations and when the state makes updates that you are updating your policies and procedures accordingly so that when the state comes in that they're going to be able to talk to you and say yeah it looks like you're doing exactly what we would like you to do that's excellent um, here's you know these five things that we need to make sure that you are correcting and doing um, a little bit better than you're doing right now so those are a few of the things you know the reality there of the situation that uh, as you're getting started with your assisted living facility today's video we've been talking about the licensing process and those three kind of pre-inspections that you might see with the fire department sitting zoning and planning and with the health department themselves and then we talk about this ideal world they're gonna come out in the first 12 months but in reality, it's just probably not going to happen, um, at least as of the recording of this video. Uh, they are probably going to be out a little bit closer to that 18 to 24 month mark. You just want to make sure that you are doing everything that you should be doing for you to operate your facility. If you found this information helpful and you are looking at getting started on your journey to assisted living and, and starting to, to you know operate your own assisted living facility, make sure you get over to assistedlivinginvesting.net have a free calculator for you over there. Also, I'm working right now, I just finished uh, working on week 11 of a 12 week course. And this is going to be, oh, it's probably gonna be close to 20 hours of content that is specific to you and helping you through this journey with 12 steps, with action steps and, and plans for you to implement and start working to get you started on your own assisted living facility. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure you get on the email list now, get over to assisted living investing net so that you are the first to know when that comes available and as of the recording of this I haven't launched this yet but I think by the time this is up there will be the business planning guide that goes into kind of that initial phase of what you need to do to get started with your assisted living facility so make sure you get over to the website sign up be on our newsletter we have uh, a few different things there by way of just kind of a newsletter that gives you 12 action steps that mini that 12 week course in a mini miniature version that's going to give you action steps as you're waiting for that course to come out and I, I really want to help you out here uh, in kind of coaching you on your process to obtain your own assisted living facility. Does residential assisted living sound interesting to you, but you don't know how to get started? At assistedlivinginvesting.net, we're here to help you through the process start to finish. And remember, it doesn't take a lot, just a little bit. Keep going, keep making progress step by step by step. I promise that if you do, you're going to be successful. Thanks for watching and have a great day. <music>